What is up everyone? Welcome into the channel. Paint Splats here. Today we are going to be covering Grey Zone Warfare, going over my thoughts about the Alpha, some discussion notes from the public round table, and where do we go from here? Diving into the Alpha, you really get a grasp at the scope of this project and how big and ambitious these guys are with what they're doing. I was really impressed with just how beautiful the world is that you're interacting with. The PvP elements are fun, the PvE elements are there, everything just seems to be there in this game. Having played the Alpha on an older system with the 2070 Super graphics card, I was really impressed with how my PC was able to respond, especially with all of the server issues and lagginess that were happening throughout the week. I love how big the map is in this game, and I love that it's not singular maps, it's all one. And you go back to your forward operating base, you pick up your quests, and then you go out for as long as you want to, to do your quests, do whatever you're doing, and then come back when you're ready. I love the transportation system they put in this game. The helicopters are easy to use, straightforward, or you can choose to walk. Going back to the helicopters, that is one of my biggest gripes is I felt like the game really slowed down when all the helicopters were in the air and I had to sit and wait to call transport in. Walking on this map does take a lot of time and I would love to see some interaction with the map while I'm walking to my next destination. Once I got to where I was going, it was impressive to see all these locations that I could explore and spend more than just a couple minutes exploring them. The healing mechanics did take a little bit to figure out, but once I did, it was pretty good. I could go for shorter animations in some spots, especially the serve kits, but everything else was fine. The gunplay in this is solid. I really appreciate that it's actually encouraging you to shoot your gun and you're not punished to engage in fights. Eating and drinking in this game are really straightforward with great animations. I appreciate that it doesn't feel like I have to stop every 10 minutes to eat and it didn't become a chore. It'll be interesting to see how they manage that going forward, though, with the start of your character leveling up skills, leveling up yeah, abilities. I think so. Overall, the traders were good. It was pretty simple to navigate the menus. However, there were some inconsistencies, and I felt like I spent time really... searching for parts. I would love to see the parts divvied up to what they are, even if it makes the scroll a little bit longer. I got frustrated sometimes looking for the exact part I needed. I really like that there is no right way to play this game. You can go it alone, or you can squad up with your buddies, or for me, it was making a lot of new friends with people within my factions. I like the faction system. It's going to be interesting going forward to see how that is treated. I think it's a good way to get people to interact with each other. However, I do worry that we will have faction overloads, and I also don't like that if you're on one faction and your friend's on another faction, you can't play with them, and I hope to see that addressed in the future so that there's more cross-faction interaction well, besides here. the PvP aspect. For it. Let's, are we hunting in the village? Are there guys in the village, do you think? No idea. I don't know. I haven't heard a gunshot yet. I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it. The AI was really hit or miss. Either you're shooting them from a distance and they're not engaging with you, or they're absolutely beaming you out of nowhere. I know the devs have talked about this and said that this isn't the AI models that are going to be in the game, the AI behavior that's going to be in the actual game. So it'll be really interesting to see when this game drops, how the AI respond, what they're doing. Are they going to laser me from 50 yards off, or are they just going to sit there and eat bullets? Chopper coming in, landing. If you've stuck around this long, thank you so much. Make sure, if you're not following the channel, to go ahead and hit that follow button. Turn on your notification bell so you never miss a second of the action. And make sure to come and hang out on my other socials as well. We are always on Twitch going live. We post shorts on TikTok, Instagram as well. I would love to have you guys be a part of this community and help grow it. Let's talk about some things that I would love to see come into this game in the future. Obviously, the devs have said that 70% of the game was not in this build that we just played which is just kind of crazy if you think about it. But with this map being so big, we need some interaction in the jungle. I would love to see roaming jungle patrols or even jungle patrols that you go and hunt. I think it could offer a unique challenge 
and just make you really think about how you're getting around the map. Another thing is, going back to my original thoughts, I don't like how you can get caught up waiting for a helicopter to come in. It slows down gameplay immensely. I hope they add other forms of transportation to this game, but one of the biggest downsides for me is having to wait seven or eight minutes just for a helicopter to get out of the map just so I could call it in and wait another five or ten minutes for it to come to wherever I was and then take me back to base. Going back to that 70% of the game not being there, I'm really hoping that we get a dynamic loot pool. It felt like looting was pretty inconsequential in this game. You maybe picked up some food. At the start of the game, you pick up a better gun-ish, some ammo, and then you move on. I hope that we get to see a pretty significant bump in each level of gear that you have. Yes, you can challenge in this game with whatever loadout you have, which is great to counter meta gaming. I think it's fun that you can win a fight with whatever you have, but for those of us who quest a lot or grind for gear, I think having that gear mean something and feel that reward of getting that gear is really important. Now, the devs did say that there are more AIs coming into this game, such as bosses and special area AI that we can fight. I hope that they constantly are updating the AI behavior. I hope there's not just a tried and true method to, oh, this is how you hunt this particular group of AI. I think by adding that, you're going to keep people engaged, even if they're not in a PvP sort of situation. Now, the devs did say that they're going to be adding other ways that we can engage in PvP other than randomly running into people in the world or base pushing, one of those being camps in the wilderness. I think this is a fantastic idea to have forward camps where you can respawn, have bigger staff sizes, and have those be contested areas, but it'll be interesting to see how that comes into the final culture of gameplay in this game. We are getting a dynamic weather system day-night cycle in this game. I think that's going to be a great add. I just really hope that day-night cycle is balanced and night doesn't feel like it lasts forever and daytime is really short or if it's raining it doesn't rain for 10 years and affects my character in games like DayZ. But at the end of the day that's the developer's choice and me as a player I'm going to have to accept that and learn to adapt and play in that situation. There was a lot of concern over the playtest of camping extracts, camping infills. This was addressed by the devs and they did say you will be able to shoot out of helicopters and landing spots will be more dynamic. But it'll be really interesting to see if they decide to add cars. I think adding cars that are driven by AI in our car infills and car extracts like helicopters that could work more off a karma system or actually having to pay for them could be another great alternative to getting people where they want to go. Overall, this game was a ton of fun. It was a breath of fresh air for me. I really appreciated being able to go in as a casual gamer, casual content creator. It didn't feel like I had to sweat my mind off to be able to keep up with other people in the servers. Going forward, I really hope that it stays that way, but at the same time, I understand that this game is going to be evolving. One of my biggest fears about this game is not being able to play it casually and having to grind all the time. I really worry that we're going to have an issue where we have people who aren't able to play all the time min-maxing for gear and having people drop gear. I think that's something that's going to have to be addressed somehow, but I don't exactly know how you address that. In that same fear, I don't want to have to bum gear off my friends just to be able to play with them because they're in high level areas. It's going to be a fine balance that they're going to have to find as a development team, but I have all the faith in the world that they can do it. As of this video, there is no set release date for early access for Grey Zone Warfare. However, the devs did drop the price listings with the standard edition starting at $34.99 and the supporter edition going all the way up to $99.99. There are some variations in between of prices and what you get with each bundle. My question is, are you wishlisting this game? Are you going to play this game? Or are you going to be waiting to see what it does? Drop a comment, drop a follow. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next video.